Hey beautiful souls, welcome, 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 welcome to my channel. <laughs> I welcome you all from the bottom of my heart and uh, uh, I'm grateful to have you on board with me on this journey of spiritual awakening and uh, sharing with you from my experiences, how I navigate through my journey and if I could share with you something that would benefit you that greatly delights my heart. So let's get started. In today's video, I'm going to talk about three ways in which you can manage your Kundalini awakening process so that you can bring more ease in your process. Since I've been sailing through my process for so many years and I'm just following a very natural navigation and I'm just following uh, this energetic nuances of this process and that is helping me to get in touch with uh, more the in establish that intuitive connection with this energy and so today I would like to share with you from my experiences that what works for me and you can apply by taking in what can work for you from that information following your channel of intuitive inclination so let's get started. There are three ways in which uh, you can manage your Kundalini energy and bring more ease in your process if you feel that you are uh, feeling a lot of resistance in the process and you are having symptoms that are very uncomfortable. So the first uh, very powerful way to do so is, is to start releasing resistance and understanding what is the texture and nuances of resistance in your process? That is very important, my friends, that unless you begin to focus on how resistance is appearing in your process, because Kundalini is a unique process, it will appear differently. It will manifest differently for different individuals based upon your situation, your karmic inclinations, and your samskaras, right? So pay attention to how Kundalini is appearing in your life, in what manifestations, and what kind of resistance is there in your system that needs to be smoothened out, that needs to be erased, or that needs to be taken out for this energy to flow and channel herself smoothly through your system. So start observing in your process, where are you feeling a sense of irritation, a sense of anger, a sense of frustration, a sense of helplessness, a sense of anxiety, a sense of not being supported, because these are all the impressions of your survival-based consciousness, which this energy is trying to wipe out from your life. That is the base purpose first of this energy in the initial stages to help you come into your core essence of Love, light, and laughter for me. <laughs> and I believe for everybody who's sailing through this process to come into that peace, we need to connect with the frequencies of love, light, and laughter and playfulness and joyfulness in our lives. That is the end goal of this energy of transformation to bring us into our core self into our core essence from where we can feel that interconnectedness of our energy with the universal energy. And then when we begin to come into that resonance and the dance and that movement of connection, uh, you will come into that phase of your process where there will be a lot of synchronicities and a validation in your process of awakening and opening up to those realms and dimensions of consciousness where you begin to identify that 
how you have that interconnection and relationship with the higher dimensions without getting entangled into them, without getting attached to them. And keep sailing through your process by staying in the container of presence and unconditional love for yourself and for your process and for others around you. So basically any kind of resistance is coming from these spaces which are more lower vibrational spaces of consciousness that are trying to hook us into the base levels in the lower chakras, in the lower energetic centers, these blockages are happening. So any kind of anger, any kind of projection, any kind of uh, ego enmeshment that is coming through these filters and lenses needs to be washed out during this process with mindful reflection and self-compassion as well as other compassion. So the first thing that you can do for yourself, my friends, and to establish a relationship with this energy is to start paying attention to where in your life you are feeling a sense of helplessness and that helplessness is making you project on to other people. This helplessness can happen in any formats. It is based upon your life circumstances, people around you, or these are your own narratives, your own energetic uh, stories that are getting cooked up in your consciousness. And in order to um, mash them and then really magically dissolve them with the power of your own awakening energy, you need to do this work of self-reflection, inner work, and paying attention to where is resistance dominant in your life right now, right now, right now. <laughs> So that is a lot of work. I've been working on it since 2005. And there are moments when you will be so tired as if you have taken on all the burden of the world on your head because awakening is not an easy journey. Awakening is a lot of self-responsibility. It's an energetic responsibility where you have to really start coming back into your own center and from that center, you have to work in parallel on your shadows as well as on your lighter aspects. So when this happens in parallel, these are the, these are the skills that you need to develop you know, during your process, how you can swim and then you can fly like a bird in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you know like as you work in parallel on your shadow aspects and are also trying to balance your shadows with your lighter aspects because remember you are both we are the polarities are always operational in our consciousness and in our energetic dimension so you need to work in parallel and these are the skills that we can develop so uh, sign up for the support groups. The link is in the description box below where we can talk more about how to sail through the process while managing both the lighter and sh shadow aspects because when we are tackling our shadow aspects, it's very important that we balance them with our lighter aspects so that we can stay in closer connection with this energetic process and move past in a more productive, efficient better way in this inward journey of our beingness. So that is the first thing. Start observing where is this lower vibrational frequencies are still dominant in your energetic system. And secondly is um, taking time to relax because our survival-based mind that has been conditioned so well to the societal and cultural pressures is always on the move. And there's always this tendency to do something. Why are you 
not doing something productive or why are you not channeling your energies in doing something so you got to again be very intuitive during this process and start developing that uh, connection with her so that you can listen to her voice when she wants you to take time off and just do nothing because in that nothingness and taking time off you are really cultivating that uh, giving that space where you can start looking at your life and a new pathways can develop in your consciousness of fresh perspective so take time off if you are still in a panic mode or you're still living in that dimension where when it's time for you to sit alone or take time off and you are feeling uncomfortable around it still if you're in that phase of your process then remember this is a coming back home process and coming back home is like coming back into your own center and coming back into your own center, when you are really coming back into your own center, you really don't need anybody else's company. It is not that you have to withdraw or you're isolated. No, you can go out, you can have fun, you can make friends, you can still be a very much social person, but it is how you're radiating energy from inside to outside. It is about that from outside to inside, inside to outside, inside to outside, outside to inside. That interplay of energy shifts because now you're so much attuned and in tune with your core essence that connects you to the universal essence that you are so grounded in that essence and that essence is of high vibrational frequency, my friends. So that brings you a feeling of fulfillment and completion, a sense of peace. So that fear factor is kind of getting wiped off in that coming back home. So even when you're alone for extended periods of time, it's like you are having your own retreat all the time. You don't have to go and attend the retreats because this energy is giving you that capacity where you are in your own retreat whenever you want. It's always available around you 24-7. <laughs> so take time off. And this is taking time off is learning to come back home and feeling at ease, feeling in sync with the time spent with yourself, you know. See, healing happens both ways. Healing happens by yourself and healing happens in community, in groups as well. That is why I encourage you to show your interest. There is a link in the box below because we will be talking all these things in these groups, in the support groups. And, you know, when we come, words have a healing power. When we come together and we talk from a place of valid experiences, and the words we offer, which they can have a lot of healing power, you know. Our words have a lot of healing power, especially when we come together and share our experiences that gives validation, that makes us being seen in our experiences from someone who's also sailing through the same experiences. So that is a very potent healing container, my friends. So I would encourage you to, because now I feel I'm ready to start doing on a small scale these groups because I was sailing through my intense process and I didn't have the energy to do so earlier on. But now I feel that bit by bit, bit by bit, in my baby steps, I'm developing that energy and I'm happy and I'm speaking from a place of, my authentic truth, and that gives me so much a sense of peace and fulfillment that I'm able to do that now in my process. And I wish the same for everybody who is going through this process. So do come and join these small groups from time to time. I would be uh, giving out starting very soon, probably 
from this month or next month, I will be announcing in the community uh, section for that. So, and you don't have to worry about how much you will be paying because I'm just going to keep it a kind of sliding scale, whatever is your budget, starting from a very specific small amount, you can go about sharing energy as per your financial situation. So that is the second thing, my friends, that you have to start coming back home and feel a sense of safety and connection with yourself and with this energetic process. That is the second thing you can do to manage your process. And these are all very long-term kind of processes that once you are able to step into uh, grounding yourself into these forms of uh, managing your energy, uh, you are good to go like, these are quite, they will root you into this um, process in a better way. So that is the second thing you can do, taking time off whenever the energy requires you and paying attention to it so that you can come out of your survival mode and start connecting with your true essence. And third thing is, if you meet the second requirement of coming back home and take time off and leave behind and manage and dissolve and befriend your fears that arise during this time and start feeling comfortable uh, by yourself for extended periods of time, then comes the third step. And that third step is to start connecting with your higher purpose, you know. Because this energy's purpose is to bring you into your unique essence and connect you with your higher purpose. So you need to meet the first two conditions in order to step into this third condition of meeting your higher purpose is what is your higher purpose when it comes to service, providing service to the world, providing service to others when you have done a cleansing work on yourself and that high purpose will connect you with your unique gifts that you are gifted with by the universe so a lot of times we are in jobs or we're doing things which are not resonating with the high vibrational frequency of our heart's desire so a lot of your heart healing when it happens it will bring you in sync and attune you with your unique soul purpose. I always like to say this. When I say the word soul purpose, I see S-O-L-E because that is the second, second step of the process. Go into your soulness, aloneness, not isolation. This is not isolation. This aloneness is not making you isolated at all. This is bringing you into a more compassionate connection with everything around you, including yourself. That's very true, my friends. And that's a part, a very powerful part of this process to bring you in connection, a very curious and compassionate connection with yourself and with others around you. And it is here that you're going to meet your soul purpose. So I hope, 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 hope <laughs> I'm able to say something that could help you in your process to manage your process in a more kinder, compassionate, and in a loving way. So if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and leave your comments. I love reading them. And it will help me to understand my community better. <laughs> Lots of love light, and of course, laughter. Bye-bye. <laughs> and I'm doing my course on basics of laughter yoga. If you would like to join, you're welcome to do so to bring some more joy in your process and in your life. The link is in the description box. Bye-bye.